Hey everybody, Josh, KI6NAZ, and I have this floppy antenna that we got to look at today. Uh, this just won't do. Let's see if we can fix this. There we go. That's more like it. Let's talk about the air antenna on 20 meters. So I've been following a ham from Scotland for a little while on Twitter. And I was intrigued because he was selling these Shakespeare VHF UHF vertical inflatable antennas. It's got a little blow in hole here. And some of them, depending on if you pay for it or not, have a CO2 cartridge that you can then just pull on it kind of like you would with an airplane life vest and it'll fire off and, and inflate it for you. This is actually a little over inflated. It's kind of got a bit of a bend in it anyway. Uh, I found this interesting because it's really easy to pack away and it's nice to have on your person maybe for a soda activation or just an emergency preparedness thing. Obviously VHF UHF has a lot of utility, but he started talking about this being able to work on 20 meters after a modification that they do. So I reached out to them and I got a version of this antenna and it went in my pack on the soda camp out that we did in November. You might have saw it on the video. It didn't do very well. And the problem with it was is that this thing was way out of tune. It only at the lowest dip on the SW at the SWR meter got to three to one SWR and the dip where it actually lived on the band. So it was beyond the 20 meter frequency space. So when I got home from the trip, I contacted the owner and he said, Something's wrong with that. That's not how this is supposed to be. Send it back to us. We'll take a look and we'll get you out a replacement. This is the replacement. So the good news is that it is actually much uh, better off now, although this is a bit low. That's right at 14 megahertz, but the lowest spot on the SWR meter is close to 1.5 to 1. It's fairly broad banded, taking it up into the single sideband portion where it stays below three to one SWR. So that will work with most QRP radios when you go portable or, or you know, want to work outdoors. Three to one will work with your 7300, your 991As, etc. if you drag those out into the field. So, okay, that's operable. Let's take it outside and give it a try and see how the air antenna on 20 meters works. I have the air antenna connected up right now. It's hanging from some paracord that I have strung across the yard. And we've just got it connected here. Real quick tune check. Very good match. So we'll try to make some calls here and see what we can do. Kilo, India 6, November, Alpha, Zulu. Yeah, I think somebody started with Kilo, I think. Can we call Kilo, India 6, November, Alpha, Zulu. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Okay, I just get the kilo at the start. Um, I got kilo something. Go ahead again. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. QSL? Okay, I got November Alpha Zulu. Uh, kilo, maybe Kilo India 6. Yeah, that must be Josh. Um, kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Uh, QSL, QSL Mike, yeah, you got it. This is Josh in Southern California. I'm talking to you on a QRP with a very compromised antenna. Uh, you are a 555555 to me down in Southern California. QSL? Okay, I got the QRP and some kind of antenna. Uh, what was the antenna over? Yeah, it's like a little bit. Uh, it is an inflatable, inflatable antenna for 20 meters. Inflatable antenna. Okay, I, I couldn't get the antenna, but I definitely got the, the word antenna. <laughs> and uh, what is QRP? 
Uh, QSL, QSL, thank you for trying, thank you for trying. KI6NAZ73. <laughs> That'll work. A couple of things I noticed when I was using the air antenna was that it is very affected by anything metallic that you put by it. When I got this thing up in the air away from any other metal, it actually brought the SWR bit up. So meaning it kind of shortened the length of the antenna and that seemed to get it a eh, little bit better off for single sideband, which is where I made my first contact with this. And it was on 10 watts to Calgary from Southern California. So that did okay, admirably really well. The, the contact wasn't that great, but surprisingly, I think this would do okay in some soda activations and it would probably be okay uh, for parks on the air if you gave it enough power behind it. Now, as far as power output goes, this is probably no more than 100 watts output and you obviously don't wanna push that much if you're doing digital or CW. The coax is permanently affixed to the antenna and at the end it has one of those uh, kind of do-it-yourself PL259 adapters, the solder on type, not the crimp on, and uh, it seems to be okay. I do want to remind people that uh, we're oftentimes not using these PL259s out in the field. And so you will likely need to have an adapter of some kind to go down to BNC if you're using HF QRP radios or uh, even smaller than that if you're gonna use an HT. PL259 is not great necessarily for portable antennas. I know there are exceptions to this rule, but that's generally my experience and what I look for, BNC in particular. So I'll show you some of the features that are a bit not standard that I think are kind of cool. This green and blue Velcro, pretty heavy duty Velcro, uh, about a little over a foot of it. And what you can do with these, and what I did, was if you've got something low on the ground that you can kind of use as a mast, then you just take this, wrap it around the outside of it like that, and affix it to whatever structure is functioning as your mast. So you don't really need you know, a freestanding anything, you can just kind of Velcro this on with those two Velcro straps, which is nice. This, all of this stuff, by the way, is basically what is on an airplane life vest. So this inflation valve is also the two-way valve for l releasing the air. You just push on that and it will let the air out. This also will let you top, top it off if it starts to drain on you. As far as the CO2 valve, my first model of this that I got did not have this CO2 valve. You don't need this. You don't need this at all. So if you don't want the novelty of it, don't even bother with it because you can blow it up fine. It takes one second, probably one lungful of air to blow this up. Not a big deal. With that said, 16 gram CO2 cartridge and it is one of those pull types where you just yank it down and it opens, pops a hole in the CO2 and it inflates the uh, air antenna. 16 grams is way too much for this thing. You could probably go with 14 grams. Um, I know those are available in some markets. So yeah. A couple of things to round out the top on this. I don't know that this was done on purpose, but there's a little pocket here. And if you're working off of a tree or, or you're in an area with something non-metallic, you can just hook the antenna right on that. And that works fine. A couple of trees in our area has got kind of thick enough branches because this does have a bit of weight to it. Just pop that on the end of your tree limb or whatever and it'll hang it up just fine. I didn't find that much of a difference whether I got it a couple of feet in the air or if it was close to the bottom because this is kind of like a vertical. It's hard to show on camera, but there's actually wire that kind of runs up and down or it's possibly two parallel sections of wire. I don't really want to take this apart to figure it out, but it definitely feels like multiple runs of wire. So maybe it's just a linearly, linearly loaded um, dipole of some kind or some kind of vertical, which I, I don't know. That's just oriented in a vertical position. So all in all, fairly straightforward antenna for a fairly straightforward video. It seems to work okay. On 10 watts, I got to Calgary, Canada, which is not bad, wasn't the greatest contact, but still successful. So 
for about a hundred bucks uh, shipped to you from Scotland. Maybe this is interesting to you. I don't know. I'll know more when I take it out and do a bit more thorough research on possibly a soda activation. It's pretty light. It packs up pretty easily. So I don't think you'll have any problem taking it with you on your, your trips. Showing you really quick what it looks like if you, if you pack this down, you just uh, push here and it will kind of self deflate. Now what I normally do to pack this up, starting at the tip, hold down the drain valve and, and there's a cap here that you just kind of turn this around and that'll help you hold it open. And then you just kind of go into it and start folding it back and forth on itself. Right, just keep folding. Now about when I get to the end here, I just take it and go back the other direction. And then that's pretty much it. You can take your coax, coil it up around it, and then use the Velcro straps to wipe, uh, to wrap around it to hold everything in place. I'll weigh this really quick. Let me get you a measurement. So all bundled up like a so, it is one pound, 3.4 ounces. The coax is permanently affixed and is about 15 feet of coax. So you tell me what you think of the air antenna on 20 meters in the comments below. I don't have the VHF UHF model, but I assume that is also uh, pretty, pretty effective. Actually, it's probably more effective than this may be. This has obviously got some compromises going on, but at a pound and 3.4 ounces, not bad to pack away. Doesn't pack up that big and the coax is attached. I did weigh it with a CO2 cartridge, an empty one attached to it, just in case. Um, you get a couple of uh, ounces if you pull that off. Anyway, I'm Josh, KI6NAZ. Like I said, I'd like to hear your thoughts on the air antenna below. If you have not already, please give me a thumbs up and consider hitting that subscribe button because I live stream every Saturday at 5 p.m. All right, that'll do it. I'll talk to you later. See ya.